Hi everyone and welcome to the Timeless History channel with me, Derek aka Sal, the Omega Enthusiast. If this is your first time watching my video, consider joining me on Instagram as I upload new posts daily on some of the most attractive vintage watches. Have you considered buying yourself a vintage pocket watch? Vintage pocket watches are generally affordable and make outstanding display in your home or office. They can replace a table clock if you get a pocket watch dome to hang them on. I do not carry one around as I always have a wristwatch on. Instead, I display my pocket watch collection in a small showcase. In this episode, I will go through a collection of vintage Omega pocket watches from the 1930s to the 1970s. Only three pieces are from my collection. The rest will be listed on the Omega Enthusiast website. I will go through each piece and provide a brief description. Please note that many of these older pieces do not have a reference number inside the case back. So I had to meticulously uh, research and put in a lot of effort searching online and through books to find their reference number. I'm doing it just for you guys. So please give this video a thumbs up. The book that helped me uh, a lot is called The Journey Through Time. Uh, you can click on the link above to watch an episode I made about this book. Over a hundred different Omega Pocket Watch references exist, but I will review 18 references in this video. Without further ado, let's get started. Watch number one is a 1931 Omega Pocket Watch chronograph on the reference 141. The beautiful porcelain original dial is in excellent condition. The case diameter is 50.3 millimeters, and including the bow, it will measure 65.5 millimeters. A gorgeous piece of history. Like every watch on this channel, it has been fully serviced and running accurately. The movement inside this watch is an Omega Caliber 39 CHRO. Watch number two dates to 1936 and is under reference 1031. 20 micron gold-plated case measures 44.8 millimeters, and including the bow, it will measure 55 millimeters. I have two of these same references with two different case back design. The movement caliber is an Omega 38.5L. Note that most Omega pocket watches look similar, but the unique bow design and the original crown and neck or shoulder design significantly differ. Watch number three, which I also have two pieces, is under reference CK1021. Both pieces date to 1936 and carry an Omega Caliber 38.5L manual wide movement. The case diameter measures 47 millimeters and including the bow, it will measure 56.2 millimeter. Note that a different dial design does not mean a different watch reference. Watch number four is under reference CK1012 and also dates to 1936. 
I like the bold design on this one. The case diameter is 47.5 millimeters and including the bow and crown, it will measure 58.6 millimeters. The movement caliber is an Omega 38.5L. Vintage Omega pocket watches usually have a snap open back and bezel. Just make sure when you insert the knife to open the case or the bezel to slide upward. This way, when the knife goes in, it will not damage the movement or the hands and dial. Watch number 5 is under reference CK1055 and dates to 1937. It has a unique fixed bow and a round neural crown. It's important to purchase this piece with this original crown as finding an original uh, crown like this one to replace is a challenge. The case diameter is 45.5 millimeters and including the bow and crown, it measures uh, 54 millimeters. Unlike the last three references, the movement in this watch is an Omega Caliber 37.5L, which is a uh, slightly smaller and thinner movement compared to 38.5L. Watch number 6 is under reference 1053, and it also dates to 1937. The case is 9 karat gold and measures 45.5 millimeters, excluding the crown and bow, and including the bow will measure 55 millimeters. This piece also carries an Omega Caliber 37.5L movement. You will notice the case shape of this and the previous piece, which look like a coin. Since the case is made of 9 karat gold, this watch is likely from the UK or Australian market. Watch number 7 is under reference CK417 and dates to 1938. Similar to watch number 4, I like the unique bow design on this one as well. The case diameter measures 47.7 millimeters, and including the bow and crown measures 58.6 millimeters. The manual wind movement is an Omega Caliber 38.5L. The similarity between these older uh, references is the majority come with a small second hand. Watch number 8 is under reference CK325 and dates to 1938. There are many different hand design and I was unsure what this set is called on this watch. But thanks to the Journey Through Time book, this type of hands is called Fuchsia. The case diameter measures 48mm and 56.8mm including the bow and crown. The movement caliber is an Omega Caliber 38.5L. Watch number 9 dates to 1938 and is under reference OJ346. The 14K gold case measures 48mm in diameter by 61mm including the bowl. The case has a hinge which means the back is a snap open flip type. The bowl on this watch is the most basic so it is easy to locate a new replacement if it goes missing. We're halfway there. If you enjoy this type of content, smash that thumbs up button below. You can always support my work on Patreon as well.
watch number 10 is under reference CK169 and dates to 1938. Out of the 18 references that I will go through in this video, this one is by far the most challenging piece for me to research its reference number. The case diameter measures 48.6 millimeters and including the bow will measure 60.5 millimeters. Watch number 11 is under reference CK374 and is one of the most popular pocket watch references from the 1940s to 1950. Uh, here are three examples. The bullseye dial dates to 1942 and the other two pieces date to 1950. Note that a common watch can be rare if it comes with a unique dial design or the overall shape of the watch is in excellent condition. How can a common watch in excellent condition be considered rare? Well, think about its age and ask yourself, there are billions of people in our world, but how many 70 or 80 year old humans look fit and still working out in the gym? Watch number 12 is under reference CK1120 and dates to 1945. Originally, I thought the fancy bow on this piece was a replacement, but I later found out that it is actually the correct original bow to this reference. That's because the Omega Museum in Switzerland owns this same looking timepiece. The case diameter measures 46 millimeters by 58 millimeters, including the bow. Watch number 13 is under reference 312 and comes in a two-tone silver case. This piece dates back to 1945 and has a similar design to watch number 9, as you can see uh, the hinge on the case. It is slightly bigger, measuring 49 millimeters in diameter by 64.5 millimeters, including the bow. It comes in a few different dial tone, but the copper version is the most attractive, at least to me. I have two pieces of watch number 14, one of which includes its original box. These are under reference 1153 and come in an 80 micron gold plated case. I'm determining whether the uh, chain are original for both watches, but I must inform you that a chain on a pocket watch makes hand winding the crown difficult. Both pieces dates to um, 1950 and measures 43.5 millimeters in diameter by 53 millimeters, including the bow. The movement caliber is 140, which is an upgraded 37.5L caliber. Entering the 1960s, we have uh, watch number 15 under the reference CK1180. Many watch collectors will mistake this reference for one from the 1930s or the 1940s, only to find out that the two examples 
I have here date to 1962 and 1966. This reference measure, measures 49.4 millimeters in diameter by 60.7 millimeters, including the bowl. The movement caliber is 161, which is an upgraded 38.5L caliber. Watch number 16, introduced in 1963, can be under reference 1706 or 131.1706, depending on the production year. This piece under reference 1706 dates to 1965. The case diameter is 44 millimeters by 55.5 millimeters, including the bowl. As you can see, this is a much slimmer pocket watch since it carries a wristwatch movement under Omega Caliper 601. The nice thing about this movement is it has a shock resistant balance system. Watch number 17, introduced in 1967, can be under reference 1714 or 131.1714 depending on the production year. This piece under reference 1714 dates to 1968, whereas the other three pieces, which dates to 1969 and 1970, are under reference 131.1714. The case diameter on these uh, are 44 millimeters by 54 millimeters, including their bowl. The movement caliber on this reference is 601. The original chain is uh, really nice, but again, it makes winding difficult. When these were purchased new, a pouch was included. Several of the older references also came with a pouch. Lastly, watch number 18 under reference 121.1740 was introduced from 1971 to 1985. Its chrome plated case and boring looking movement makes this timepiece undesirable and undervalued. This piece dates to 1974 and measures 48 millimeters in diameter by 60 millimeters, including the bowl. The manual Y movement is an Omega caliber 960 but don't get fooled by its undesirable look. It is a great movement. If you enjoy watching this episode, smash that thumbs up like button, and I will make sure there is a part two with more references. Is there a piece in this video that caught your attention? Please comment below which is your favorite piece from this video. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this episode. If this is your first time on uh, this channel, consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you in the following video.